Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the new and somewhat unusual discoveries coming from the center of the galaxy, but also discoveries that potentially solve a major mystery. A mystery in regards to what's known as hypervelocity stars. And so let's talk about this concept in a little bit more detail, but let's start with some explanations first. And I guess explanations in regards to stars moving in a galaxy. You obviously don't feel it, but right now the Sun is orbiting the Milky Way galaxy at 220 kilometers per second, and quite a few stars in the galaxy move at a relatively similar velocity, orbiting around the center, with each orbit usually taking a few hundred million years. But in the last couple of decades, researchers also discovered stars that move a little bit faster. For example, in one of the recent studies, citizen scientists or basically amateur astronomers, discovered at least one object that actually even seemed to be a little bit too small to be a star and potentially was a brown dwarf that was moving across the galaxy at 600 kilometers per second. And this is actually faster than the galactic escape, which is believed to be anywhere from 520 to maybe 580 kilometers per second, which basically suggests that at some point this unusual brown dwarf will possibly escape the galaxy, which is why these stars are referred to as hypervelocity stars, anything with a speed high enough to eventually escape the galaxy. And quite a few of these stars have been confirmed in the last few decades, suggesting that this is a relatively common phenomenon. But here the question has always been, what exactly forms them? What's the main mechanism that forms these stars? And will one of the resolutions involve the binary system and basically a supernova? Once the supernova happens, it gives the partner star enough kick to start traveling at several hundred kilometers per second. Alternatively, maybe this involved some kind of a passage next to a black hole, for example, a binary black hole system, where due to the three-body system interactions, the third object will suddenly get a dramatic kick, once again reaching speeds of at least five to six hundred kilometers per second. And though most of these scenarios seem to make sense for a lot of these observations, they don't make sense for some extreme examples. And that's because in the last decade, at least 20 of these stars have been discovered to have speeds over 1000 km per second, basically double the escape velocity, which by itself would be extremely difficult to achieve. Here even a supernova event or a passage next to a black hole would not provide these velocities. But based on observational evidence, researchers always had one potential explanation, and the explanation here made a lot of sense when you start tracing back the origin of these stars by looking at their vector of velocity. Many of them seem to have actually come from the center of the galaxy, and specifically the location of the central black hole, Sagittarius A star. And so here the explanation was that maybe this kick and this velocity was basically the result of the interaction with the central black hole, and specifically the interaction between a binary system where one of the stars gets kicked out or even swallowed by the black hole, and the second star suddenly achieves ridiculous velocities. And that explanation, theoretically, made a lot of sense. But there was just no physical evidence. As an evidence suggesting that this is even possible, or evidence of some kind of a precursor binary system where this could one day happen. Moreover, additional observations of this region actually revealed something extremely unusual. Here there seem to be a lot of young stellar objects and even a lot of young stars that seem to exist around the central black hole, but also seem to behave in slightly different ways. You can check out some of these stars in some of the previous videos about S stars and G objects, but in essence, many of these objects and many of these stars orbited in a very strange way, appeared extremely massive and extremely young, and in some cases even turned into some really strange clouds when approaching the black hole. Moreover, Sagittarius A star forces a lot of these objects to assume certain formations and orbit in certain ways, with many of these S stars even moving at several thousand kilometers per second in velocity. And so this bizarre three-dimensional organization, bizarre orbits, and of course the fact that these stars appeared extremely young, all kind of made no sense. And that's because, technically, we actually expect only old and dim stars in orbit around the central black hole. There should be no young stars here, especially stars younger than at least a few hundred million years. But many of these stars appeared younger than 5 million years, suggesting that they either formed here or somehow managed to migrate here very quickly. None of which made sense. But there was actually one additional mystery. All of them were single stars. And that's actually the biggest mystery of them all, when it comes to massive young stars, especially stars that are super bright 
and visible from far away, in most cases they are always binary, or actually at least binary, in some cases they actually contain several stars. As a matter of fact, the majority of bright, massive stars are always at least binary. But that's not what was visible here, these were all single stars, and not a single one of them was a binary. And that was of course both a mystery and actually a potential explanation to everything. It essentially implied that the extreme environments very close to the central black hole most likely caused a lot of these stars to change dramatically, and maybe most of these were binaries, but then either merged or became disrupted over time. And so for example in this study by Devin Chu and his team, the discovery was that 16 young supermassive stars in the orbit around Sagittarius A star were all single stars, even though they're expected to be binary. And more importantly, these were all S stars, or these stars with very strange orbits, and all of them appear to be younger than 6 million years old. And so the conclusion here was that Sagittarius A star seems to destroy binaries and turn them into something else entirely. Something that can resemble very exotic objects such as the G objects, or possibly turning their partners into hypervelocity stars. But all of these were basically still assumptions, because we still needed to find at least one binary system in order to see if their existence around Sagittarius A star was even possible. Because then we can basically make an assumption that if a binary does exist here, it can eventually become one of these bizarre and somewhat difficult to explain S stars. And well, for the first time ever, this study right here from December of 2024 finally discovers such object. The first ever binary extremely close to Sagittarius A star that seems to possess just the right parameters to eventually become one of these bizarre objects. A star currently referred to as D9. A system in orbit around Sagittarius A star and a system that's almost certainly a binary, and the reason scientists know this is based on the analysis of Doppler spectroscopy. Here by looking at the star for several years, and by using the ESO's Very Large Telescope, they were able to measure the Doppler effect, or basically the redshift and the blue shift, revealing a wobble that happened every 372 days. Which basically suggests that this is two orbiting objects, with the bigger object at 2.8 solar masses and the smaller object at 0.73. And they both seem to be orbiting at a distance of 1.5 astronomical units, which is much less than the tidal disruption limit, or basically the central black hole would rip apart the partner, turning this binary into a single star. But based on these parameters, and based on the orbit, scientists believe that in about 1 million years, this system is most likely going to change, either merging, becoming one of these G objects, thus possibly explaining their origin and basically suggesting that G objects seem to be merged binaries, or maybe tidally disrupting one of the stars and turning it into a hypervelocity star possibly even eventually ejecting it from the Milky Way. And so basically by detecting the first ever binary around Sagittarius A star, we finally have several potential explanations for many of these mysteries detected in our galaxy. But there is one more mystery about this star as well. It actually appears to be 2.7 million years old. And so unless it recently came here and was then captured by the black hole, the origin of the star system is not entirely clear. Although it is possible that it might have been created in one of the nearby regions. We've actually talked about some of these star forming regions in some of the previous videos in the description, but quite a few of these molecular regions do form new stars, and maybe this is just one of these binaries formed there. Either way, by detecting D9 and by basically discovering the first binary around Sagittarius A star, we finally have our first evidence that hypervelocity stars possibly result from binaries close to Sagittarius A star, and also evidence that Sagittarius A star transforms a lot of these binaries, turning them into entirely different types of objects, and many of them with extremely strange parameters. But that's basically all we know for now. This is still an extremely mysterious region, and we actually know very little about it. But as we learn more, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by doing channel membership, or by buying the one for person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.